This is the JPEG The Raw Podcast. I'm Mike Howard. I'm broadcasting from the basement of Nod Studios here in sunny and hot Atlanta. JPEG The Raw is a photography podcast for the amateur photographer. You can find us on the web at www.novstudios.com and you can contact the show by emailing us at podcast at novstudios.com. You can also find us on Facebook, Flickr, and Twitter by searching for JPEG The Raw or just follow the links on our website. Steven said yes. There you go. Getting the thing ready. I'm going to just zoom in on this person. Which, I don't want it to be me. Let's make it That's Kathleen. I was going to say, don't make it me. Great. <laughs> <laughs> now, Kathleen, what you don't, um, for everybody out there in chat, we don't have music still playing, do we? Hopefully there's no music playing. Um, <laughs> what Kathleen doesn't know is in Google+, Plus, you know, when you have the three windows here, no music playing, good. Is I can if you click on one of the windows, that person will show up in the main window. So normally the whoever is talking will show up in the main window. So if I unclick her, I come in the main window. If I click on Tim, Tim comes in the main window. So that actually helps in something like this with a with a broadcast, where you can choose who's going to be in the main window. Uh, if I just, just don't un- click on me then. <laughs> if, I uncl- if I unclick on Tim, just whoever is talking will come in the main window. I hate to be difficult, but I'm not seeing anything. So can You're I? Not seeing us? No, my. Um, I I don't know what's going on. Um, if I get off of Skype, is that going to screw everything up? No, you, we're not on Skype right now. So you... okay, I just with Rachel coming on, I didn't want to mess that up. But I think I've got too much going on my computer. Yeah, that that's fine. Yeah, you can close out of Skype. Okay. And we're gonna have to. Let me let me start recording. Hold on. All right, we haven't actually officially started the show yet, but while we're, we're going to start on time, which is really good. <laughs> well, we got everybody out there. I'll go ahead and tell them um, we're waiting on Rachel. We don't know what time she's going to come, but it's going to cause a little bit of uh, a challenge in that we we're going to bring her in through Skype. So, Kathleen, we can do a couple of things here. We can either just me jump out into Skype and do the thing with her. Y'all won't see it then. You'd have to watch it and lie. In the, that's uh, that's fine. Thing. Just make sure you tell her hello for us. Yeah, and then I would come back into into here. We can okay, do that. Cool. Yeah, I agree. Out, that's probably the best way because then you're not worried about Skype working or not. Yeah. The right. people, the people, you guys watching it live don't have to do anything. You just stay there. The streaming will still happen. Um, yes, and somebody said much better than Skype. The other, the other thing, if, if you've never used Google+, and Tim and I have used it some, I think this is Kathleen's first time. It's my first time doing the Hangout. I've been on Google Plus, and it's it's actually really nice. But this Hangout thing, yeah. everyone's so, so much more clear when I when I can see you, and it just seems to flow so much easier. It does, and and some I was showing Kathleen earlier. You know, with Skype, you're often battling your video, whether it's showing, not showing, that kind of stuff. And Google Plus, don't, don't get me wrong, I don't want to jinx us here. Google Plus does have issues from time to time. But one of the things, and hopefully I don't mess it up here, I'm going to start and stop my video. And that happened really smooth. When I hit stop, it stopped. When I hit start, it started. Uh, much, much better than Google+. Plus. Um, I, I do have a little bit better light here because our, our great guest from last week, Scott Green, gave me an idea. You know, I don't have a good spot to put my full umbrella here. <laughs> and I don't want to bring in one of my big lights, but I have these little LED lights so that are pointing at me. They're about this big around. And I put a flash diffuser thing uh, on top of it, so it's diffusing the light. So i got much better light come right on me. All... Well, what do you do for us natural light photographers who don't have all this <laughs> equipment laying around? <laughs> fancy, fancy equipment. I think that was a $9 light from Lowe's. All right. And the diffuser was probably part of a $19, $20 package. So, you know, Scott Green gave me a great idea. I don't know why I didn't have that idea on my on my own. But, you know, that's part of watching this is you, you see somebody like Scott, you know, dude, what the heck? I, could, I got something I could do that on a smaller scale than what Scott did. Well, it looks so. good. <laughs> All right. So um, let's, it's two minutes past. Uh, sorry, Tim. Let's go ahead and get started. This is JPEG to Raw show number 23. 
uh, on January 3rd, and it's starting our new time. We're starting at 8.30, uh, starting with the new year. We're doing a new one with Google+, Plus, our first one in a while with Google+. Plus. And uh, I like this way, this way much better. Yeah, it's um, working great. We're so excited about everyone being out in chat, so thanks again for joining us, guys. We and Happy New Year, everybody. Yeah, and that's my host, uh, Tim Kimberly and Kathleen. Um, welcome, guys. Welcome, welcome. So I, I know we have some people out here probably waiting for Rachel and, and trying, wanting to find out when the uh, well, who won her giveaway. Uh, she will be coming in or, you know, a little bit later on Skype. Um, I don't have an official time yet, but she'll be coming in later. We'll make the announcement. I don't even know who the winner is yet. She's going to pick a number. We're going to, you know, I got to randomly put in there. She's going to pick a number, and whoever that number is is going to be the winner. And, and then we'll talk about how that person is going to uh, get their thing. But while that contest is ending, we have a new one that started uh, Jan a little bit before January 1st. That's going to run through the whole month of January, and that is our guest next week. And I'm sure we'll talk about it a little more next week, too. That is the uh, Sarah Cornish from My Four Hens is giving away her Buy My Store package, which one of the questions I want to ask her is I'm not quite sure what that means. She has a lot of stuff in her store, and I don't know if it includes her... I think it does. It includes her Photoshop, her uh, actions, her Lightroom presets, her Photoshop elements, actions, and some of her textures. Uh, That's an amazing there giveaway right there. Yeah, it's if it's what if it's all the things I'm thinking it is. It's oh, it's you know seven hundred plus dollars in value. Yeah. Um, but we'll we'll find out for sure next week when she's on what all it includes. So. And we're so wanna... excited to have her on the show. I mean, she's got so much experience under her belt, and she's got such a wide fan base, and she kind of does it all as far as the photography and having a business aside from photography with the actions and presets for Lightroom and it's this girl kind of does it all so she'll be a really really great um, guest and a great um, contact for us all to have to learn and grow more yeah yeah she definitely will be it's, it's gonna be a, a very very good way to start the year um, the, the month of January off and speaking of that you know our, our Facebook group has, has started taking off pretty good too uh, we have a number of people in there and it's starting to get very active um, I know Kathleen's been in there. I've been in there. We started with, after Kathleen drafted me, we started with an idea of, hey, let's have a theme on certain, on certain days. Let's have a theme on certain days. And uh, I think one of the ideas was Manual Mondays, where we talk about cheating in a manual. And I think because Kathleen knows that I don't cheat in manual that often, uh, I don't shoot in auto. Don't get, don't get that, you know, I, I've, I've often said I'm not a pro, but that doesn't mean I shoot in auto or program mode. I generally shoot in aperture mode. Um, so I think she did that just to pick on me and said it was my turn to go first, and I did. I, I did the first post on um, when I do shoot manual, uh, and when that is 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 typically when I'm shooting like high school, um, high school basketball or something like that. Something indoors where the light is going to pretty much stay the same, and I will set it off the face of the player, but also look at their jersey and make sure I'm not blowing the jersey that kind of thing. And I did that post, so, you know, if you want to go out there into our group, uh, just search for JPEG to Raw if you're not a member already. If you're a member, you know, you can find that and add to it, you know, uh, we're going to keep building on that. Kathleen is going to be next week. She's going <laughs> to, as she said, I quote, blow your socks off. That's right. You so better she's, wait for it. It's coming. She's, she's going to give us such great <laughs> insight into um, doing manual, uh, shooting a manual in next week's post that, you know, it's going to be worth joining just for that. <laughs> <laughs> so tonight's show is we we're going to do some live edits. We were going to, um, right, Kathleen? We we're going to do edit some yes. of our photos live. Yes. Um, and see, you know, this is the first time we've done this, so we're going to see how it goes. Hopefully it'll be big enough where you guys can see. The video right now looks pretty clear, so I'm hoping, I'm looking at the live stream, it looks pretty clear, so hopefully it will come through clear enough where people can see. You won't be able to see, you know, any fine-tuned edits. I think if we're doing, sh and we're going to talk a little bit about sharpening, but if we're doing, you're, not, you're probably not going to be able to see great detail in sharpening, but hopefully as we talk about it, you'll get the general idea, and we can well, talk about some things. And this has to come with a disclaimer as well. This disclaimer is, is that we're sharing the way we edit just for the sake of sharing what we do. 
none of us are claiming to be experts on any realm of the matter and we are sure that there will be tips that you can pick up and use yourself and other things that you might say I don't know why she's doing it that way there's such a quicker way so it'll be a little bit of both this will yeah. probably be a real big learning experience for me alone yeah <laughs> yeah I think that's a that's a great point is we're not trying to say this is the way to do it we're just saying this is the way we do it and I don't know about Kathleen or Tim but I don't always do it exactly the same way each time. I kind of just move around through the program. In the program, I'm going to be using Lightroom. I think you're probably going to use Photoshop, right? I'm um, going to use Photoshop, yep. Yeah. Tim, I don't, I don't, Tim, are you doing one? I have Lightroom. Okay. I prefer so, not to do it and embarrass myself. <laughs> well, you don't have to. So we'll be using Lightroom and Photoshop. You know, I imagine, I haven't used Elements in a while, but if you use Elements, um, some of what you're going to do in Photoshop will also work in Elements, right? Sure. Mm -hmm. I haven't used Elements in a while too, but I mean, I'm not doing anything super crazy. So yeah, and you know, for as much as Photoshop cost, it's really I don't get my value out of it. I guess if you can say if I can, if there's something I can't do anywhere else, then I get the value out of it. But I do most of my stuff in in Lightroom, and really only come into Photoshop if I really need some layers, mm -hmm. or I need to do some um, some uh, what is the healing brush cloning. Right. Kind of stuff. It's easier to do in, in Photoshop. So I do a lot of mine in Lightroom. So I'm what you know, it, everybody it's, it's your own choice on what you do, but for someone who already has elements, before you go and buy photo full Photoshop, you may want to look at getting Lightroom and have Lightroom and Elements and see how that combo works for you because Lightroom is so so much cheaper. Lightroom if if you can get it at the teacher student discount, it's like eighty nine dollars or something like that. Correct. If you, you always always look for the teacher's discount or student discount if you can get it. It's yeah. big savings in money for Photoshop as well. Yeah, it's not going to be eight nine dollars, but it's going to be much cheaper, right? If you can't find it at if you can't get it at the student the teacher price because you don't have access to that, then your Lightroom is you know one eighty nine I think regularly. I've seen it on sale for one twenty nine. Um, those you know either one of those prices even one eighty nine. Is way better than. What yeah, um, it's really good if you can get on that student and teacher discount deal. I mean, um, my mom happens to work at a university, so I lucked out there and she bought it. Right, but my wife is a teacher, so that helps me. Mine too. But okay, so let's uh, get started. Who wants to go first? I think you do, Mike. Ah, there you go. Drafted me again. And I was going to say the same thing. <laughs> we're, vote, we're voting here. I'm Google right. Plus high-fiving you. Google Plus high-fiving you. Too. Okay. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so let me share my Lightroom screen and see. Let's wait for it to come through. All right. I may need to... Sh Shrink this down a little bit to make it look better. And let me do one more thing. I'm going to remove our names so you don't have to see that. All right, I'm going to show you. This is a, a photo, and this is Lightroom. And when I pull it up, I'm in the library mode. I'm going to move over to the develop module, and you're going to see some funky things happen here. Kath, I don't know if you all have ever, Tim probably has, but I don't know if Kathleen has. Is you see all these red marks, Kathleen? Yes, yeah, so are those your blown? That is the blown highlights. Here in the histogram, you can turn those on and off. Oh, cool. And I like to, It's it can be distracting when you turn them on that you see all that red. Um, but I, I tend to like to see it so that then I can start to recover those. So in this image, um, I've got a lot going on. I've, it's a high ISO image. It's um, The lighting was just crazy all over the place. Uh, and it's one of, my, one of the swim meets. So one of, typically one of the first things I do is use the recovery slider. And that is here in the, the basics panel. And if you ever use Lightroom, there's a basics panel which has exposure, recovery, fill light, and blacks. And what that basically does is splitting up the histogram. If you can see up here is the histogram. And as you move from left, all the way over here is blacks. Then you have fill light, 
then you have exposure, and then you have recovery, which is the highlights. So if I move my slider over just a little bit, I will move it just enough to make those those red marks go away. Did you move it up in the histogram, or did you move it down by the slider? I moved it down by the slider. You could move it up here in the histogram. If you okay. move, put your cursor up here, there is a little. It'll turn into a little line, a little arrow that you can oh, gotcha. you can do it. But I usually come down here in the histogram, and I do just enough to get rid of the red the red marks. Okay. Uh, but hold on, I had turned the the thing off, so I need to do a little more. Now, with that change, how do you see a before and after? Uh, it's very, it's in Lightroom. It's very easy. You come over to your history, okay, and you can just click and go back to where it was, and then come in. Now, I'd, I'd probably want to take the the red highlight off to see it. Oh, gotcha. Okay, the, right. the red is doing a little bit. I and some, I'm I can go all the way over to 100 percent and see if I can get some rid of some of the red, uh, some more of the red. But to sometimes, like in this case. Part of it is just blown out. There's nothing I could do to bring it back. Mm -hmm. I could re I could do some of the exposure and bring it down even further. Mm -hmm. uh, that might help me. But I, in this case for right now, I'm going to leave it alone. Now the beauty is, is the fill light is only going to work on a certain section of the histogram. So as I bring the fill light over, you should not see more blown out. You should not see the red expand. Oh. So as I bring the fill light over, it'll make the thing brighter without making more things blown out because it's only working on this one section of the um, you know of the histogram it's not working over here in the exposure and it's not or very much in exposure and it's not working over in the recovery and the beauty is that you're shooting in raw so you have much more I have a little more latitude yes mm -hmm. so yeah, you know, the the exposure is still not great enough. So I might want to you know increase the exposure a little bit. As I increase the exposure, I am pushing the highlights to get worse. Okay, right. So I'm I'm not gonna in this case I'm not gonna be able to recover those because they were probably beyond what raw can recover. It looks like the sun came in right on those spots, and there's nothing it, you can do about it, it especially because so, you're shooting and not moving her you want to catch the action right so let's let's turn off the the red so you don't have to see that and we go back to the beginning that was the beginning and this is the end mm -hmm. not, not necessarily the end but where i'm at now now right. i can play i can play with the contrast and add a little bit more contrast if i wanted to that um and in that so let's let's zoom into 100 percent and you can see there's a, a a little bit of noise there, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna deal with the noise right now. Let's not deal with the noise right now in this image. I'm probably not gonna deal with it at all. I'm now gonna go over to my clarity slider. You're not you're probably not gonna be able to see this in um, in live stream, but the clarity is sort of like a sharpening, and it'll sharpen the image up a little bit. I'll I'll slide that one over to 40, 50 percent, maybe more, and I'll slide the vibrance over. To like make some of the colors pop, and this in this image there's not a whole lot of color, so it's not going to help out a lot. The next thing I might do is sharpening. Now, hopefully this will come through. I'm going to bring up the sharpening to let's say 50, 60 percent. But what I don't want to do, see all this blank area? Yeah. There's a lot of noise in that blank area. I really do not want to sharpen that blank area. Right. It's going to make the noise even worse. So there's something here called masking. So if I hold down my Alt key and then mask. You should see things turn to uh, black and white. Okay. Almost like a, a negative. Mm -hmm. You seeing that? Yep. As I drag the mask over, the black areas will not be sharpened and the white areas will be sharpened. So this is uh, very similar to like a layer in Photoshop. It is. It I is. Like it's, it. it's very similar. So what I just did was so I what sharp did you do for the masking? What button did you push? I, oh, this is on the PC, so it may be a little bit different on on the Mac. Okay. So on the PC, I hold down the Alt key and then slide the the masking over, and the okay. parts that are the parts that are white, which you'll see is the, you know the edges of her hair, some edges around her face. Those things will be sharpened, but all this blank area will not be sharpened. Gotcha. That's awesome. So that's one global thing. It, typically, in one that is high ISO like this, I won't do much more, but right. I could. I could come into this this shot and come over here to the adjustment brush 
And now I'm going to do a um, a sharpening. Let's go with just um, 20 percent. I wouldn't necessarily use it for this image, but and I want to bring clarity down. I had clarity there. I want to bring clarity down to 20 percent also. And now, ooh, it's a big brush. Make that brush a whole lot smaller. I don't know if you'll be able to see the brush, but I can bring the brush and just highlight, sharpen certain areas like her teeth and her mouth and some of the water drops on her. I think in chat all you're seeing is a black line, but that's yeah. that's where my brush is. You, it's not coming through the screen very well, but that's where my brush is. And that for this image, I might be done. Now, again, I'm not selling this image. I'm just posting it online for the parents, and I'm trying to go through it pretty fast and move on to the next one. So this is not... Um, you know, one where you're going to spend hours on editing. You're just going to get through it, move to the next one. Very cool. So that's and what I like about the edits, they're non-destructive. They're saved as part of a sidecar file. So Yeah, what you're seeing over here in the history is you see a history of every step you, you took. So you could, if you needed to, you can go back and, um, you know, Go back a step very easily. Go back ten steps very easily. However many steps you want to go back, you can do it. And like Tim said, you're not. It's not adjusting the file itself. The file is still the original raw file. Mm -hmm. All this stuff is written off to the side in a sidecar. Uh, I think if you shoot, if you change them to DNG, which is the uh, you know the Adobe default digital format, negative, digital negative, uh, it actually saves it, the the sidecar as part of the file. Very cool. So I, I don't do any of my editing in Lightroom just because I've never um, gotten in there and figured out how to use it. But after seeing that, I might give it a shot. It makes it very simple to get at least your exposure edits done. And the way that I personally sell my images is I do exposure only edits to my images and then I allow my clients to see them and then they choose the ones they want to purchase and then I go back and I fully edit out the ones that they're purchasing. Um, yep. So ahead. let me show you. Um, let me show you something else here. So when you're looking at the screen, and how can, how can we make this come through even clearer? Make it bigger. Is it clearer? Maybe a little bit. All right. Um, in this in this one. You see that my histogram, you, you can barely see it up there in, in, in the chat, but my histogram on the blacks does not go all the way to the left. Mm -hmm. And this is just something I like to do, you know, is, and, and you look at this, it looks a little washed out, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It, doesn't, it doesn't look that great. So I take the blacks and I move the blacks over until my histogram hits that left side. And now that it hits the left side, you know, I'm done at least for now for the blacks. So bef before, after, not a lot of change, but it does make things you know a little bit better. Mm -hmm. um, then I may bring up the contrast. And I want to, I want to enhance the blues. What a pretty sky. Yeah, that was our cruise we took a few years back on Disney. Mm. Very, very, it was very nice. So I'm going to come to the um, HSL color black and white section. And I'm going to increase the saturation of the blues. I'm going to overdo this just so you see what it's doing. But look what it did to the blues. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's too much of introducing noise. But you can see it, it brought the blues over quite a bit. Right. You can also, if if you you know that may not be just solid blue. If I there's a little thing here, adjustment saturation. If you click on that, and then come into the the color that you want, you can then drag it up and down by itself. You're just moving your, what you're doing is you're choosing this little icon that's in this HSL color black and white section. There's a little icon. Mm -hmm. Clicking on the part of the image that has the color in it that you want and then moving your mouse up 
or moving your mouse down to increase or decrease the saturation. So what it did when it did that is, you know, to my eye, it looked fairly blue. Mm -hmm. But photo, but Lightroom sees that, well, it's mainly blue, but there's a little bit of purple in there. So as I move the slider up and down, it's, it's moving the blue and it's by a large amount and moving the purple by a little amount. So right. it's, it's doing both of those at the same time. If I then and come over and do another one on the yellow right here. Uh, that's probably too small, you won't see it. Let me do the green area, the water. Make that really crazy looking. <laughs> so as I move my slider up and down, you can see it got really green. Mm -hmm. um, and that is just, again, just picking that little, that little picker and then finding a spot in the, in the image where you want to enhance the color, moving it up and down. Now, you know, that is, uh, you wouldn't want to go to these extremes or go into these extremes so you can see them in there. You'd want to do a little bit less. You could also do it manually in here, but when I did that, not only did, you know, it didn't just affect the greens, it affected the aqua, the yellows, and the oranges and reds. It affected all of those colors, um, you know, uh, by uh, various amounts based upon whatever that color content was in the area that I clicked on. But the good thing in this is, like, the people that are standing on the shore, I, I couldn't tell any change happening to them because they didn't have the, the green in them. So they didn't get a funny cast to their skin suddenly. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. If you got a funny cast on their skin, you could go on their skin, click on that, and then adjust Drag it down, down or up to yeah. try and bring it back. There's a program, and I, have, I actually have this program, but I'm not going to use it for tonight, called uh, Nick Software, where you can... Only do regions of the image. You can go in and say, I want to only do this little area, and that, that can help you even more not adjust certain sections. That's very cool. I like it. Yep, so I made that one look a little silly with the water. But you can yeah, the see. sky looks good. The, uh, the, the water? Yeah. <laughs> the water looks like it's... Uh, I'm not sure I want to go in there. It looks a little toxic right now. Yeah. It, it does. It does. Now, um, let me get rid of that. So let's say that I want to do those same adjustments to every image I had in here. I don't, but let's just say I did. Mm -hmm. um, I can now, I, if you see the little bar down here where I have all these images that I'm editing, right? there's a total seven. I highlighted all but the first one. Okay. The, the, the last seven. There's a thing over here called sync. If I hit the sync button, it pulls up another little window and it'll be interesting so to see if this window. So you're including the image you just edited in your sync. Yeah, that's the first one. Okay. Now, you probably you can't read this out in chat, but basically it's giving you every type of, of image edit that you can do. White balance, your tone, exposure, uh, sharpening, color saturation, all those different things. So the first one that you have checked is like the main one, is the primary. You check all these other ones, and now you're going to synchronize all the other ones to match the edits of that first one. So wow. if I hit if I hit you know check none and then I go and say I want clarity I want to put my clarity on every one of these or my color treatment my saturation I can hit um, synchronize and it'll synchronize across all of them. That's wonderful. In one edit, so I typically would do. There's some that I especially when you do in one shoot where you have a bunch of images that are very similar. Mm -hmm. I typically will will make the first edit to the first one. Let's say I, got, I shot all the indoor uh, swimming shots at ISO 1600. To the very first one, I might go in there and um, do the noise adjustment and then take that noise adjustment and copy it across all you know 1,200 images and, um, and be done with it. And Scott out in chat asked me, what's my average time spent on the image and editing? Uh, much quicker than what I'm showing here in, in, in this. I'm, it's, if I am doing it for the, the parents and I'm going to be posting the photos on the website you know, after a swim meet, gosh, it's, if I'm spending a minute on, on each image, it's, it's probably a minute or less because I'm wanting to do a, as much of it as I can to one image and then copy it out to, uh, to the others. So right, it's how do you get your white balance across all the pictures as well. It's, but yeah, so if I'm taking a dive shot, you know, uh, the dive shot, I might have six or seven of them, or, or 20 of them, who knows, and that one little same lighting conditions, and they all were over or underexposed by a stop. I make the adjustment to the first one, bam, I can copy it out to all the rest of them, and, and then I don't have to spend a ton of time on each one of those. 
you know, for something that I'm wanting to enter into a contest or I'm wanting to get a big print on or something like that, I may spend more time with it. Right. That's awesome. Okay. Um, I think we're at a good break point because guess who just texted me? Perfect timing. Perfect timing. Cool. So let me – hold on, everybody. Let me try and uh, get her in. All right, so this is going to be a little tricky. I am – everybody out in chat, just stay there for a second. We're going to um, see how we're going to do this. We're in Google Plus now, and I need to get out and go over to her. So, let me stop sharing. Y'all yeah. two just want to hang out in here? Yeah, we'll, we'll wait here. All right. I'm going to leave, and then I will come back. There's another beautiful thing about Google Hangout is that um, even though I started it, I'm going to exit, and it should keep going, unlike Skype. All right. I'll see you guys in a little bit. All right. Bit. Have fun. Okay. All right. Hi. All right. Yep. Okay. All right, can you guys hear us out in chat? We were doing the podcast through uh, Google Plus, and we've stopped the podcast for a second and came over here to, to be with you on um, on Skype. And so we could do a live drawing. Everybody's so excited. <laughs> I'm excited too. Yeah, I told him I don't even know who the winner is yet. <laughs> so here's what we'll do is I will let me pull it up. Oh, somebody just Okay. Yeah, and that how you just sent me that message? I'm gonna send you uh -huh. a, I'm gonna when you after we have the name, I'm gonna send it to you that way and I'll let you announce it. Okay, sounds good. Mind. Okay, so yeah, of course. Pick a number between 1 and 156. Oh, let's go with 18. 18. All right. Here, here is the winner's name. Okay. You ready for me to announce it? Yep. Go ahead and announce it. Okay. Uh, Melissa Sanchez, you are the winner of the gift certificate. Woohoo! And I think Melissa's out there. <laughs> I hope so. I'm excited. If not, I'm going to post it on my Facebook page just in case. Yeah, Melissa's out there. She said, are you serious? <laughs> oh, I see her. <laughs> awesome. So good. Yeah, just shoot me an email or Mike, whatever you need her to do. If you need her to claim it through you. No, she, you know, um, I have her contact information, but Melissa, if you want to just contact um, her directly, that'd work too. Sounds good. Ooh, that oh, was... I love seeing all these names that I recognize <laughs> in the chat room. That's so great to see people from week to week. Yeah, I think a lot of people came out here um, to, to see the giveaway. This was very exciting to, well, do, it, to do it live like this. Well, we're going to do more giveaways, I'm sure, in the future. Yes, that was very good. Thank you very much for the donation. Uh, oh, of course. Melissa, I think, will very much appreciate that, and we appreciate that, too. Hope you awesome. have a good well, new year. Good to talk to you guys in the new year. Yeah, good to talk to you. you got a lot going on. You're already at over 6,000 likes on your page. I know. Things are good. crazy right now. And you and Morgan are doing all kind of workshops and stuff. You oh, yeah. We've, uh, we're have we actually talking about going up the East Coast uh, this fall. So be watching for information on that. Very nice. That That's very exciting. Yeah, well, I keep, I keep watching what you're doing. Awesome. Thanks, Mike. Great job. Okay, thank you, Rachel. All right, talk to you later. Bye. Hey, bye. All right, everybody, hold on. I'm going to come back into the Google Hangout and go over there. So I'll be out for just a second.
All right, can everybody hear us out in chat? Hey guys, can you hear us? We're back. Oh, I hear somebody's feedback. Did you yeah, turn, I turn mine off, Tim? I turned mine off. Mine's well, that must mean we're coming through. Ooh, that worked. Wow. So Yay. we jumped out of Google+, Plus, jumped into Skype, jumped back into Google+. Plus. And I, after I went to go back into Google+, Plus, I was like, oh, boy, they don't know how to invite me back in, and I can't get back <laughs> in without an invite. I don't know. <laughs> so I... I I started a whole new chat, and when I started it, I popped into this one. That's, well, you know, that's perfect. That worked well, out good. Sound. Vinyl Freak says sound. What's what's wrong with the sound? Is it? Sound? I think that was the uh, feedback. Can you guys hear us okay now out there in chat? Okay. Yeah, that must have been the feedback he heard before. All right, so we have a winner in the that we chose live. Um, Melissa Sanchez. I was so glad to see that the the winner was out there. Yes, so was that, I. I know that, that was so fun. That was so much fun. And what was what was really fun is I, you know, quickly I was looking to see is is because I saw as soon as Rachel saw eighteen, I picked I looked at that name and said, oh, I see your name. Is she out there? She had posted two or three lines above the last post, so I was like, awesome. Ooh, she is there. Yeah. So congratulations, Melissa. That's I'm I'm so glad you were here for that. Yeah, congratulations. Um, now, if you if you didn't win, you know, like I mentioned at the beginning of the show, we had the next contest going on. And if you join this contest, you really have already done almost everything you need to do in order to join the next contest. The only thing that's that you may not have done is also liked my four hens page. So if you entered this contest, and Melissa, you're not um you're not exclude you not you know, you can join the next pot, uh, contest too you know the winner can join again you're on a winning streak Melissa yeah. I say go for it <laughs> so you know you, you it works the same way as the first one you go into that con that, that thing you fill out the form the only thing that you uh, probably didn't do is, is you know my four hens uh, like in that page and you can go on if you only did one or two entries you know feel free to do some more like join in the the, the Facebook group but very exciting. That's very exciting, and and the next, my four hens will run all the way through the end of January, so you have they have plenty of time. So now it's Kathleen's time to to do a live edit. Awesome, fantastic! And this is okay. going to be Kathleen's second time sharing her screen. She's only we've only tried this once, <laughs> but know. you know, as we're getting ready for Kathleen to do that, you know, if you're watching this, um, you know, this hangout thing is so powerful where. The quality you're seeing here is a little bit diminished in chat, but the quality we're seeing through the Google Hangout is is really good um, for the most part. So if if you were in one of these, and I think that's where the power is, we could have a collaborative edit. You know, we're we're editing, and Scott could tell me if Scott is out there helping me. Scott can tell no, Mo, no, Mike, that's not how you do that. That looks like crap. You know, you would do it this way. Um, you know, I think that would be very helpful. So I like to get some of these Hangouts going in the future. All right, well, I'm sharing my screen. Can you guys see what I've got up? We can, yeah. I can see it. I can see it pretty good. Okay, cool. Well, um, what I've selected to edit for you guys might be a little bit overly ambitious for <laughs> podcasts, so bear with me. Um, I decided it might be kind of fun for us to do a composite together because um, there's so many different elements to it that shows you a bunch of different things in Photoshop, so I thought it might be helpful. Oh, this is going to be awesome. <laughs> I have these I two agree. images that I took of my um, great nephew. His name is Maverick Boone. Isn't he precious? Um, yeah. And I get, I'm going to go how ahead. Old, how old is he here? Um, I think he was seven or eight days old. Wow. Um, I'm going to go ahead and give a disclaimer. Um, this pose that I'm doing, I do it slightly different, and I want to explain that. Um, Whenever I'm doing poses with newborns, of course, the top priority is the newborn's safety. And um, so I think it's good to show composites so that people out there know that a newborn's not ever being left to try and hold themselves like this, you know, without an adult being right there to supervise. Because um, obviously their bones and stuff aren't formed all the way yet. So we want to make sure that all hands are on deck. Um, and the way that you see these two shots... Um, I had the mom hold the left and the right side of the head and I've slightly changed my process with this shot now. Now instead I have the mom 
hold both of the wrists underneath the chin together and I take a shot and then she changes her hand so it's on top of the baby's head and I take a shot. So instead of it being a left and right composite, I now do a top and bottom composite. Um, and the reason why I changed my process is because when you do the left and right composite, sometimes the baby's head can slightly move to the left or to the right and so it makes the composite tougher to do, tougher to line up. But when you do top and bottom, like on top of the head and below the wrist, it seems to just work out better. Did that make sense? Yep, yep, makes sense. Okay, cool. All right, so the first thing I do is I call all my images in Lightroom, and then I pull the ones that I want to edit into Photoshop as copies so I'm not degrading the original image. And when I bring my images in, the first thing I'm going to do is um, I'm going to work with this image right here on the left first, is I want to go ahead and adjust my levels. Can you guys see my layers um, panel? I'm not sure what you can see. Yeah, I can see your whole monitor. Okay, you perfect. And those guys out in chat, you may not be able to read it, but you can you know, generally tell what she's doing. Okay, cool. So on my layers palette, I've got the background image here, and I'm going to do an adjustment layer. Um, and I'm going to do a levels adjustment layer. So it brings up my histogram right here. And on this um, image, I need to pull in some darks and some lights. I hold down my option key before I click. So that way, I the screen turns to white, and if I start pulling up color like that, that means I need right here. I'm clipping the darks, and I don't want to clip anything. Um, so I bring it up until I'm not clipping anything, and then the lights I bring over. If I do this, then I'm going to have a bunch of blown out highlights. So I want to bring it back, so I'm not clipping anything out. Um, and then this middle gray slider can help you add a little bit of contrast if you want to. Obviously, if you go to the right it's going to get darker, if you go to the left it's going to get lighter, and I always um, kind of bring mine up a little bit, I just like a little bit dreamier of a look to my images. Um, I have already done the same thing to this image. Oh, now my computer decided to, there it goes. Okay, so now that I have both of my images leveled out, um, I'm going to go ahead and do a merge. Before I do that, I need to flatten my levels because if I were to just drag one image over to the other, I would only bring the levels over versus the image over. So I flatten both of my images. And the way that I flatten, I hit Command F. I set that up as a shortcut because it was the only way I could remember flatten on my computer. Okay, so I want this to be my top image, the image on the right, so I'm going to grab it with my pointer and just drag it right over and lay it right on top of the other image, and then I'm going to collapse the image I don't want to look at anymore. Okay, so now I've got one image on top of the other over here in layers, and the way that you line up a composite is you take the top layer and you lower your opacity to about 50%, and then you move the layer so it matches up with the layer behind it. So um, sometimes when I'm doing newborns, I'll match up the eyes, but in this case, I'm going to go ahead and match up his head. Um, and then once I got it um, stacked the way that I want it to, I'll bring it back to 100% opacity. And then I change the top layer, I add a layer mask, and that's this little box on the side that has a circle got to it. So now the top layer is a mask and the bottom layer is not. If I click on the white box, which is the layer mask, and then select a soft round brush and the dark painter, then I can come over here to the finger. <coughs> Excuse me, I need to have it on a oh, no, Hold on a second. So <coughs> yes, I'm you, sorry. You you have Photoshop as your whole screen here. <coughs> yes, now I do. Okay. Yeah, okay. And Scott was asking, what size is your monitor? Oh, I'm sorry. It's the 27-inch. Okay. Um, my brush wasn't on 100% opacity, so that's why it wasn't erasing the whole thing. But right. I went and changed my brush to 100% opacity, and now I can get rid of the hand on one side. And instead of sitting here and boring you guys with getting rid of the hand on one side, because you obviously know you just keep going until you get it all, I'll go ahead and pull up 
that completed image. Okay, so there is after I get rid of the hand. And obviously on this side of the image, you can still see the hand from the background image. Yeah. Um, so what I would do there is I would add another layer, which on my computer is Command-J. Um, I think it would be Control-J on a PC. Um, and I'm going to use my clone stamp tool and get rid of anything that I don't like the way it looks. Whoops. Once again, my opacity was down. I need to crank that back up. So you get all that stuff out. I obviously have a funky line here on the side of my image, and I don't want that there. So I'm basically just cleaning the back of the image up. Um, I also have some wrinkles in my blanket back here that I don't like just because they're distracting, so I'll get those out. Yeah, these are all things that you can't do in, in Lightroom very you right very easily this is this is why you would want to use Photoshop this is this is really good now uh, element I don't, does elements does anybody have elements out there does this does elements allow you to do uh, layers that I think maybe... the new versions I, I haven't been in elements in a while but I thought I remember reading that uh, you do have the option for our layers now okay um, I accidentally cloned a little bit over the hand, and I don't want to do that. So um, you could use the eraser tool brush if you wanted to for this. I'm going to go ahead and do another layer mask and then use my brush to get rid of anything that happened over this little hand. It's probably not much, but that's just being particular, and it shows you how you can fix mistakes. Okay, and then I'm going to flatten that, and then... Um, Something else I do to a lot of my images, I don't know if I would necessarily do it to this one, but just for the sake of showing, um, to smooth out the background more, I would create another layer, grab my brush, and then um, I would option so it turns into the eyedropper tool, yeah. sample the color on my backdrop, lower the opacity to about 25 or 30%. And then to make the whole background of the image look consistent, I would just basically airbrush over the whole back of the image. So I'm covering the baby, obviously, but we're going to bring that baby back in just a minute. So I'm fogging that out. And then once you get closer down to the blanket where you want to see everything, you would lower the opacity even more to like 10% and then you can bring the fog down even lower. And then I would change it into a layer mask once again and then um, up the opacity back to 100% and then come back to my sweet little baby and take it off of his whole face. Yeah, I love layer masks. Layer masks are just mm -hmm. awesome. So I'm not going to bore you with taking it off his whole face, but you get the idea. Um, so let me find my next image here that I had. Okay. And, and um, who was it? Anna was saying that uh, that Photoshop Elements, the, at least the newer version of it, can do. Right, at uh, least back to number nine. And yeah, can, on do, 10. can do these. Yeah. I'm sorry. Say that again. So, what, oh, elements number nine. I gotcha. If they can do elements this. nine or ten, something like that. They can do this too. So if you have if you have elements, you can do these things too. I just opened an image in the wrong program. So give me a second here. Okay. Sorry, guys. No, these are great. I think uh, you're, these are great edits. Much better than what I was doing. No, and now you're using you're using a mouse on this, correct? Yeah, just a mouse. Um, I know a lot of people love those tablets. I've just never. Um, Really tried it to be honest with you. I, you know, I, it takes some getting used to, but I think uh, using the mouse in the way you're doing, it, it's probably easier to do it with the mouse. I don't know. I mean, I wouldn't know unless I've you. ever used both. I don't know. Yeah, if it's working for you. Right. Sorry, I'm trying to open this image correctly and getting all jumbled up here. Okay, so here's the image after I um, fade out the background. You know, okay. this picture looks very familiar. Does it? <laughs> is this the one on your main page? It's the one that I have on my attached to my emails right now. Yeah. Yeah, that's why. Okay, so this baby obviously has really great skin already. 
Um, but let's say there was some blotchy skin because that's pretty consistent with newborns. Once again, I would do a new layer, and then my favorite tool on Photoshop is the patch tool. I love this sucker. Um, so I, before you go any further, so um, you know the head here is just—he's not really holding his own head up. There was a, the mama holding his head up. Right. Scott was asking, is that why his baby's head kept falling to the ground whenever he was trying to take these pictures? <laughs> You gotta, you gotta have That's the mama. Or, why? <laughs> gotta have the mama or the daddy there holding it up, and then you gotta do the composite here where you clone them out. That's right. And you know, with newborn photography, seriously, composite, 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 because these babies are so young and so fragile, and the last thing you ever want is for a baby to get hurt. I mean, not only would that hurt the family and yourself, it would ruin it for the entire industry. I mean, if one baby ever got hurt with a newborn photographer, it would be really tough um, to gain back respect. And I mean, these, these parents come in and they trust us that we know what we're doing with their kids. So the now, the only person that really touches a baby would be the parent, correct? Um, if you have an assistant, then, you know, that would be ideal because then they're trained. But um, the composites that I do, like this one, the mom or the dad usually holds the head, and it's not like you don't have to be highly trained to know how to hold a ba your well, child's head. The other thing I noticed is the baby was didn't have the exact same look in both of them. No. That there was a, a slightly off. Right. But when you when you layered over top of each other, you can see that they were slightly off. But mm -hmm. when it, whenever you did your your layering, all that went away. That's right. That's right. Because because I guess what you're really trying you're not you're using the whole facial features basically most of the facial features from one image from one and image. just trying to clone out the parts where the hands of the parent is touching the baby. Yes. I mean even more so with my new technique. I wish I had an image showing you the new technique where it holds the top of the head and the bottom of the wrist because I like it so much better. Um, then you're only cloning really the top of the forehead out, which you know. No one, no one's eye focus goes up there anyway. And right, they're looking so at the is, face. So this is what all the newborn photographers do. They, uh, you basically, I mean, a baby at this stage can't hold their own head up. So right. unless you've got them in a position where they don't have to hold their head up if they're laying in a certain position, all these images are, are in a way composite. Composite. Right. You know, in, this is my opinion. Even if you can get a baby to hold it, hold the position by themselves. I don't feel like, as photographers, we should be doing that because, as a mom, a newborn's skeleton isn't completely fused together yet, and they just don't have, I mean, if you got a baby to hold this, let's say that I pose the baby and then I step back with my camera to try and get the picture, I mean, at any moment, that baby can drop the pose, and yeah, maybe nothing will happen, but something could, and Probably I just... Better. It's better better that you, to be safe. Yeah, it's probably better that you women do this too, because us guys may say, "All right, <laughs> hold it there and then run back real quick, take the picture." <laughs> All right. There are actually what? some really fantastic newborn photographers out there. There are guys, but what I if we tied a string to the ceiling? <laughs> <laughs> what if we tied a string to the ceiling? That would be a guy, yes. <laughs> or, um, or better yet, duct tape. Right. Okay, go ahead. Sorry. That's okay. <laughs> okay, so. Um, I would just go in here and get rid of any like blotchiness or redness. And, and what what tool is it you're using again? This is called um, the patch tool, and all you do is put a circle around the area that you want to patch, and then click your mouse in the center of it and drag it to an area that looks good and release it, and it replaces the area with the good area. And then to deselect, you hit Command D, and it deselects the spot. Um, now, I would, what? Why would you use that instead of like the healing brush? Um, sometimes the healing brush for me leaves a little bit of a dark shadow yeah. where it was. Um, and sometimes it's great. I, I go back and forth between the two, but this is usually my first this is usually my first go to. And and that's important. You go back and forth whichever one of them may not work every time. You gotta that's right. use the other one. These, that's right. you know, from the from this what I can see here on screen, I mean it looks perfect. Whenever you are using this patch tool you can't see where you've patched. I mean, it looks you can't. Perfect. And and something else that's really important with the patch tool. Let me see if I can figure remember where it is. But you want to go into um, you hold on. Let me select a spot. It's going to select under modify. You want to make sure that your feather is set up pretty high. I've got mine on fifty. I would think that about twenty five or twenty would be sufficient. 
but if you've got it down to zero, let's say, uh, it says I've got to have something, so point 0.2, and then I moved it, then you're going to see more. Can you see that on the screen? Yeah, yeah, you can see where the edges are a little bit. You can see where the edges are, and you don't want yeah. that. So you yeah. want to feather it out pretty good. And for anybody who doesn't know what feathering is, it's the edges are, bl are like faded out. Rather than a hard edge, it's more of a faded out edge, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, now, like I said, Maverick's skin was perfect. And in this photo, I would not do anything else to his skin because I like it. Um, but not all babies, newborns, are blessed with such wonderful skin. And so a lot of times I run portraiture. Um, it's a plugin that you can get for Photoshop. I'm going to show it to you really quick just so you can see it. But um, like I said, you don't want to run it on every picture. And for myself with portraiture, I have set up guidelines um, because I think that as photographers, when we do the same thing over and over and over again, we can get blind to our own editing. Um, and I've seen a lot of photographers who use portraiture and their babies always look very plasticky and fake to me. I'll show you what that looks like in just a second. And so I have two fail safes in, st in store. Number one, if any of you guys ever see my images starting to look plastic, please contact me and say you went overboard. Okay. And number two, I always run portraiture on its own layer. Um, so I can decrease the opacity. So I've got it set up as a filter. Um, it's ImageNomics is who makes the program. And you just open Portraiture right into Photoshop. And it's got a bunch of um, really cool options where you can select the baby skin. I've got it set up here for you can set up a preset, like a newborn preset, if you use it a lot. Um, I'm going to try and zoom in so you guys can see what it's doing. Can you guys see that? Yeah. Um, so yes. I'm clicking, that's before portraiture, and then I'm unclicking, that's after. So yeah, it really it smooths it out the skin. Yeah. And then the more you up the threshold, the more it does, basically. Um, okay, so I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. And see over here on my layers palette, it's doing it as its own layer. And my rule personally, is that whatever I do in portraiture, it has to be, I have to switch, get my opacity on Photoshop under 50%. That's my rule. So what you see on the screen right now is portraiture at 100%, um, which, I mean, it's not terrible, but to me, you can tell that that baby has been completely airbrushed. And I personally like my images to look a little bit more real. Um, and so, like with him, I probably, I, I wouldn't do portraiture at all. But most babies, I try and keep it around 30 or 40 percent, so I would dial it down quite a bit. Okay. okay. So I'm getting rid of that because I like him plain old, plain old. Okay. Um, the next thing that I would do is um, check my cropping. And for kicks, I'm going to show you guys how to stretch your canvas, which is a lot of fun. Um, so I come up here to my crop tool, and then you always hit front image so it's got the size and dimensions of your front image. But to show you how to stretch your canvas, I'm going to um, reverse my width and height, and then drag it over my canvas. And then um, to get good composition, you always want your focal point to be on one of the crosshairs, basically, right here. So I'm going to bring it over his eye, and then I'm going to shrink it back into the photo, just kind of working it, working it in. That looks about good to me. Um, and then check it. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select my little marching ants thing. It's called the rectangular marquee tool. And I'm going to select everything on one side. And then I'm going to hit con Command or Control, depending upon if you're on the Mac or the PC. And then I'm going to hit T. This is your Transform tool. And then you drag it all the way over to one side. So you're stretching your canvas. Enter. And then I'm going to deselect that. Um, and then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Now, I'm sure you 
well, you might be able, not be able to see it, but what it does is since it's stretching your canvas, your canvas looks stretched and you don't yeah. want it to look stretched. I can see it. I don't know if chat can see, but the part where she's stretched looks like the blanket has been, you know, stretched out. Stretched. Looks like the printer was pulled a little but too I, quickly in a picture. Yeah. yeah I, I imagine you're going to show us how you correct that. I am. Whoop. Okay, so the way I correct that is goes back to um, creating a new layer. Once again, grabbing my um, brush with a really soft round brush and then sampling the image, lowering my opacity to about 30%, and once again going out and smoothing all of those lines out by basically fogging over it. And I would do that on both sides. Once I get down here to where the blanket is, I would resample and then go over the blanket as well. So it's basically going to look fogged out. I think I have a finished thing complete before. Looks like a perfect birth announcement. Yeah, you left room over on this side for text. Okay, I didn't. So here, we're just going to do this. Then. Yeah, this is really great, especially if you want to get an image out there with your. Um, for like promotional reasons, I know that Scott Green did a wonderful billboard. This would be a great billboard shot, wouldn't it, Scott? <laughs> <laughs> so what you're doing is you're, you're um, fogging it out so that the stretched area uh, is not so obviously stretched. Right. And you're also fogging out what was some of the blanket, too, so it all blends in together much better. That's right. Um, and, and, and again, how, what are you using to fog? I just use my um, brush tool. Yeah. You're selecting the color. So if I was on 100% opacity, I'm just going to show you for kicks, and I selected the color, then this is what you would get, a line. Yeah. But because I am lowering my opacity, then I just get a fog. Um, and then, you know, because you're on your own layer, you know, that's before and that's after. You could lower the opacity if you want to and do 50%. But on my screen, I can still see where it was stretched. Um, can you zoom in a little bit on it? Sure. On that? I can still see where it was stretched a little bit. And I'm going to fix that again, but a different way. So you guys can see a couple different techniques. I'll go ahead and flatten before that. Before you do that. Yeah. Can you do show the before and after and that was zoomed in a little bit? Oh, yeah. Hold on. Okay, so zoom in more. Yeah, there you go. So people good? in chat can yeah, so they can see. Okay, it a better. so this is before, and you can see all the stretched canvas marks. Right. Yeah. And I'm not sure why it did that extra jump there. Maybe because I paused while I was stretching. Do you see that on the right yeah, hand side? Yeah. I see it. Yeah. And then this is after. Okay. Okay. Um, so I'm flat flattening that. Um, and then what I'm going to do is show you guys how to do a gradient. Um, I'm going to select um, my light color. I always pick the lightest color on my canvas for, and I drop it and then I s stretch it up quite a bit. And then I'm going to select my dark color and once again you select you know, your darkest color on your canvas and then I bring that down a bit. Okay, and then you go under um, a, your adjustment layers. You're going to create a gradient. Then you're going to make it a, you can do a linear gradient. Sometimes I do that. With this one, I want a radial gradient. And see how it puts a, like a spotlight in the center? I want to reverse that. Um, you can make your angle whatever you like. I'm going to go for 150. Um, and since my subject is not centered, I don't want to align it with the layer. I want to uncheck that and then move the transparent part right over his face. And then hit OK. And then because it's a adjustment layer, I can click on the layer mask itself, make sure that my opacity is back up to 100%, and I can get rid of all of it off of his face so it's not on his face. And what I will typically do is come in and get rid of all of it off of his skin so I know it's 100% off of his skin. And then I'll lower my opacity to about 50%, make my brush about as big as I can get it, and then kind of gradually go around his body so the gradient is really gradual. And then once I get that where I like it, uh, I don't like how white it is over here, I will lower that opacity quite a bit until it looks good to my eye. That's 50%. You know, you go lower. 
um, I think about 40% would work for this. And so that really kind of smoothed it out as well. So that would be complete if I wanted it to. I did want to tell you guys about two actions that I use on a consistent basis. Um, one of them is called Milk by Florabella. I'm going to show it to you. It just adds a really pretty haze over the image. Um, that's at 100%. I don't ever use anything at 100%. Um, probably 30 or 40% would be good. So that's just a different look. So that's before and that's after. Yeah. And then the other one that I love is actually a free one. Um, it's called Creamy Chocolate Black and White. I can't remember if it's from Pioneer Woman or the Coffee Shop blog. I want to say it's Coffee Shop blog. I'll try and find a link and post it, but I'm going to run that for you so you guys can see it. It's my favorite black and white that I can find. Um, oh, did it just say? I think it said Coffee Shop blog. Um, the reason why I love it is because it's got this nice chocolate layer. I'm going to turn it off. So that would be a com regular like grayscale black and white, and that's adding a little bit of chocolate to it. I always lower the opacity down, but it just helps to give it a little bit more of a dimension. It also has this creamy layer, so if you need to soften up someone's skin a little bit, you can do that, and then you can jump on the layer mask and mask out important aspects like, um, I'm going to make sure it's up at 100%, but mask out important aspects such as the eyes, so they are showing sharp through. Um, the lips, maybe? The lips, yeah, the nostrils. Sometimes I'll go through and I'll do any little creases on a baby. Uh -huh. So they really kind of stand out. But it, wow. this just gives it a real dreamy look to babies especially. And a lot of times I'll use it on uh, family shots too. So when you're um, getting the, the basic edits for the clients, how far are you going with one of these images? Well, the way that my pricing is set up, um, I sell per image, and they get a digital image on a disc, and my images are $65 per image. So what I'll do is I'll go in and I'll do exposure edits only to show the client their images, and then once they select the images that they want to purchase, I will come in and do you know, a couple different versions of each photo depending upon what floats my boat that day. Now you also give them samples of what, like a picture like this, as to what can be done with the picture. I usually will fully edit out one or two images and highly watermark them um, for them to see what, a bef and I'll show them before editing and after editing, but it's highly watermarked so they can't just lift it and keep it, you know? Right, right. Um, and then this okay. coffee shop also has a lighten feature, which is pretty cool. So that's how I edit in Photoshop. That is awesome. Great job. Great job. Well, and, let me tell uh, you, the show notes are going to be rather lacking on that one because I got <laughs> lost real fast. Yeah, I think, I, think for the, I think for this one, you're going to have to uh, just rewatch the show. Anybody yeah. wants to, <laughs> have to rewatch the show and, and pause and rewatch it again and whatever else. Um, I've been using some of your show notes, Tim, just raw, just as you know, as you write them, because you've been doing a great job at show notes. This also shows how how awesome you know, Google Plus Hangout could be. We've you know we got to get find some time where we can do some of these and bring some other people in because we can have up to ten people in one of these. And uh, Kathleen could show some of these. Now, Kathleen, or did you learn all this all on your own? Did you just develop these in your own work style, or did you? find it somewhere? I mean, that's pretty in-depth. Oh, um, yes. I Well, I've been in photography for nine years, and um, so a lot of it's from trial and error. A lot of it's from tr looking, I've spent a lot of times looking at people's images that I love and saying, how in the world did they do that? And then going online and Googling something stupid like, how do I create a hazy background in Photoshop and then reading four or five different blogs or watching four or five different videos on YouTube until I find one that works for me. Um, and then I also have a really good friend and she and I will get on Skype and share screens and she will edit a picture and I will just watch and then I will edit a picture and she will just watch and even though she's not um, she's not doing photography at a way professional level right now 
I always learn something because no matter yeah. who's doing the editing, you always pick up little tips and tricks of how they do something quicker than you did. Absolutely. So it's a lot of trial right. and error. Absolutely. You know, I'm definitely not an expert at, at anything photography, but uh, if I had to claim anything as an expert, it would be Microsoft Excel. And it doesn't even somebody who's using it for the first week, there's times when I can learn something from them. Yeah. So something as complicated as Photoshop, you know, you doesn't have to be a, you don't have to be a pro to uh, to learn something from the other person. Now, you know, you were going extra slow to walk us through and do everything like that. How long from start to finish would you say that shot that you had there from start to finish did that take you in real time if if you didn't right, have without that, explaining it to somebody without explaining it and us asking you questions and slowing you down? Um, I, I wish I could say that I was faster. Um, I've never timed myself, so that's a good question. I do know that I spend too much time on my images. Um, I feel like because I'm self-taught, one of the downfalls that that has brought to me is that I'm always second-guessing my work and myself. I feel like if I were taught in a formal setting where someone was saying, this is how you do it, this is the right way, that I wouldn't be sitting there for 15 minutes saying, does that look right or am I crazy? You know what I mean? You know, and uh, somebody asked, um, you know, do you do workshops? Uh, you know, Kathleen, do you actually run a workshop? And uh, you go ahead and answer, I guess. Um, not currently, but I, I am really wanting to do workshops. In order to do workshops, I need a space. And right now we're living with my in-laws <laughs> until we find a house to buy. And so <laughs> one of the things that's on our checklist that it has to have in my new home is a studio space. Um, in 2012, I'm scaling back on the number of sessions I'm doing. I'm concentrating solely on newborns and seniors in high school, which is going to open up some time for I can start doing one-on-one uh, -on -one mentorships and workshops. So, fingers yeah. crossed. Yeah, and you know, you had mentioned doing it the right way. I, you know, is there a right way? I think you know, especially with photography, for, there are some basic rules, but uh, uh, a lot of times those rules are meant to be broken in photography, and so you know. I often hear the, the, the phrase, you know, it's best to break the rules after you know what the rules are, you know, but I think somebody might have a different way of doing it, and maybe some of those ways makes you more or less efficient, but it doesn't mean that what you're doing is wrong. What you're doing looks great to me. Yeah, uh, I agree. And, you know, again, we're seeing a, a diminished image here online, but you can go to Kathleen's website and you can see, you know, the, the, I think she's using that one somewhere on your website. I've seen that either in your emails but I thought also on your website, maybe not. But you, you can see similar images on your website and see that uh, whatever you're doing is working. Well, good. It's amazing what Photoshop is capable of. I mean, yeah. when I learned how to stretch my background, that was like earth-shattering for me. It just completely changed, especially when you're doing in, indoor newborns. So many of the problems that I used to struggle with was, oh, if only that parent would have pulled that blanket tighter. And then when I learned how to fix the wrinkle blanket in Photoshop, it made my images look completely different. Yeah. And then when I also realized that I shouldn't be counting upon the mom to hold my blanket and I should just buy a backdrop stand, that revolutionized things for me. It's like all these aha moments just keep going off in your head, you know? Yeah, and I can see also why, you know, Photoshop is the better place for you than Lightroom. You know, the the one way, one place you might use Lightroom is those first basic edits where you're doing exposure only for the uh, for your customers. But you know, uh, as we talked last week with Scott, if if you hit, and we've talked with other people, if if you have a workflow that's working for you, there's no sense in changing it just to use something different. It's I don't know. I really you. liked what you did. It, it seems like if I'm doing exposure only, that would make that process so much quicker. The, yeah. It's not that Photoshop takes a long time, but you are having to open every image into Photoshop, which that does take time. Yeah, and it, you know, for me, Lightroom is, is good if I'm doing some minor edits. If I'm having to clone out pimples on these teenagers or something like that, <laughs> you can do some of that in Lightroom, but I just find it easier in Photoshop. And I didn't show you here, and we're, and we're really out of time. But, you know, it's so easy to just go from Lightroom to Photoshop, bring it over to Photoshop. And I think you can probably do it with Photoshop Elements also. Let's go yeah. from Lightroom. Yeah, you can pick the editing program you yeah. want through Lightroom. And then you go right back into Lightroom. And so you, can pop, you pop out, you do what you're going to do, and then you come back in. You can also do things like make a virtual copy. So let's say I want, you know, I had those eight shots there, and I wonder, do any of these look good black and white? 
I can make a copy of all eight of them, a virtual copy, not a real one, doesn't take up any more hard drive space, convert those virtual copies to black and white, and then go, eh, none of them look good black and white, delete all the virtual copies. Right. So you can do some quick things like that. but uh, I, I will say, you know how I said that I do exposure-only edits and show those to my clients? I also use discretion. Um, this is where your business mind has to come into play. Um, you have to know who your client is, and you have to try and figure out what their budget's like. And right now, because I'm doing photo shoots in people's homes, I pretty much know what their budget's going to be like when I walk into their house. Yeah. And so it's not that I'm trying to give one client less than another. They're, I, all I promise anyone is exposure edits. But sometimes if I know that I'm going to get a really good sale off of something or if I'm just extremely attached to those specific images for some, for some reason, maybe it was a milestone for me or something that I finally did good that I've been working at, I will maybe edit all of them out. And, and sometimes that works out great too. But I only promise the clients um, in their gallery to have the exposure edits and that I will completely polish all of the images that they purchase. Yeah, very good. I think that's smart business. Very good. All right, so before we get out, uh, any questions from chat that we missed? Um, Silvio is saying that you definitely have to start workshops in before May. I wonder if that means he is his, he and his wife are pregnant and uh, expecting in May. And it definitely before July. And your and your baby's due in July. <laughs> awesome, no pressure. <laughs> <laughs> I I really want to do it. Yeah, we it. just need a space. Oh yeah, I guess Silvio, congratulations. So we got Silvio uh, and his his wife expecting, and and Tim and his wife. Uh, very very exciting. And uh, I hope y'all saw the, the the how awesome Google Plus is tonight. We're going to hopefully do more of these. I don't know if if our guest next week has ever done it, and uh, I don't know if I can get her to, to use it. So we may have to go back to Skype. I don't know. I just I really like this way much better. I think it was painless. It was painless. This worked absolutely flawless. You know, there's a little little bit of scare there whenever I didn't know if I was going to be able to get back in the Hangout. And if y'all knew how to invite me back, <laughs> but we were um, wondering what was happening for a second there. Mike, I, every other show, poor Sky, I mean, poor um, live stream has been watching little boxes with question marks on it the whole yeah, time, yeah. and we haven't had that problem once with us. This is so great. Now, we what we would like to do is have a just a hangout where it's not really necessarily a podcast, but we're just bringing in some people, and we can go back and forth and do edits with each other. That'd be so fun. Yeah, so I'll set that up at some point. We'll do that. Um, as you leave the, the chat tonight, don't forget to click on the little ad down below as you leave. What, but don't do it until you're ready because once you hit that, you'll take you out of the show. And um, thank you, everybody, for coming out. Good night, everybody. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, Happy bye. New Year. See you next week. Bye-bye. <laughs>